Raphael, when I talk to my physicist friends, they are very worried as the universe seems to be getting bigger and bigger and multiple universes, maybe in infinite universes, about what they know. They suddenly feel that because the universe is so large, we can't make any predictions anymore. We don't know what we're doing because if the universe is infinite, then anything that can happen, even if it has a very small possibility, will happen. Not only happen, but happen an infinite number of times. So everything we know just disappears. I mean, this sounds like a logical fallacy here someplace. It probably is. It probably means that we're thinking about the universe the wrong way. Um, everything good that we can get out of theories that predict a very large or infinite universe, uh, we can also get by thinking about it in terms of what one observer can see and that there are simply different possibilities for what can happen there. And if we think about it in this way, uh, which we're encouraged to think about this way because of uh, uh, problems we run into with black holes if we don't, if we think about it in this way, we don't get confused by infinities. And uh, we're able to, to predict um, the probability that you'll see this thing is larger than the probability that you'll see that thing, the kind of things that physicists like to predict. Yeah. But, but many people don't treat it so easily as you do. They, they think it's a, it's, a, it's a real problem that when you have different infinities, you even though it seems that one is much more likely than the other, that if they're both infinity, then, then you're, you're helpless. It's true that there is a real problem if you insist on this global viewpoint where we're sort of playing the, the, you know, the god outside the universe who looks at the whole thing and says, oh, it's huge, it's enormous. But when you actually calculate what one observer can see in this universe, it's always just a very small, finite sure, portion. Sure. But is that so I think this an problem, oversimplification? I think that the problem of infinities and the problem that we suddenly don't know how to justify why winning the lottery is unlikely is telling us that we're thinking about the universe the wrong way when we think about this global picture. Mm. It's helpful, it's a, it's, a nice, uh, it's a nice picture to have for many purposes, but you're discovering by asking this type of question mm. that it must have a flaw. And this is the so-called measure problem? This problem of infinities popping up in the universe is the measure problem. It has a lot to do with the fact that uh, in a large universe, you don't know where you are. So even if you completely understood the theory that predicted, you know, what's going to happen, how, how big the universe is, what kind of different regions it has, um, there, there are never enough measurements you can do uh, to localize yourself in this universe. You don't know what your place in it is, precisely because you can't see all of it. So if you had an alien who got stranded on Earth, um, but had a very good map of Earth, by doing enough measurements, by looking around, uh, you know, checking the kind of plants that grow, checking the mountains around them, they could eventually figure out exactly where on Earth they are. Of course, not with a first glance, perhaps. There'd be still a few possibilities, but then you could keep narrowing it down by asking the right questions. Eventually, you'd know where you are. Uh, in a finite universe, where we have the map, we understand what's predicted for its overall shape and properties, we would be able to do the same thing by, make, by doing the right measurements. But in an infinite universe, uh, there's always some ambiguity left as to where you are, and that's closely connected uh, to the measure problem. So this problem of infinities in a super large universe, does that also generate this uh, concept, which seems like a joke, of so-called Boltzmann's brains, wherein the, the emptiness of space, the thermal fluctuation based on quantum mechanics can every so vast number of times, everything can work together just perfectly so that a brain that is exactly like mine comes into existence for a nanosecond uh, just as a random event, like every other random event, and suddenly it exists and then goes out of existence. But because there's an infinite number of time, there'll be an infinite number of Boltzmann's brains, and therefore that's many more brains than I really have, so the likelihood is that I'm a Boltzmann's brain, but I, I, I'm surely not. Is that, is that part of the measure problem? It is a way of discriminating between proposals for different measures. Uh, in physics, very often we decide between theories based on very careful observations. One predicts a slightly different value for some observation than some other. You have to do very careful experiment. But sometimes uh, we can rule out a theory based on a catastrophe, on some prediction that it makes that is obviously wrong in a really violent way. Um, an example of that is, is uh, classical electrodynamics predicting that, that hot bodies should emit an infinite amount of energy, which led to the discovery of, 
quantum mechanics. Nobody seriously considered the possibility that they made an infinite amount of energy, but it's a useful tool for understanding that something's wrong, deeply wrong about your theory. So these Boltzmann brains are a tool that's at our disposal for ruling out theories. Theories in which Boltzmann brains win are theories which predict that what we see has almost zero probability, and so they're wrong. And so they're a very useful to tool, it has turned out. Uh, and they've allowed us to make quite a lot of progress on understanding things like what will happen in the far future. It seems very difficult to imagine that time will just keep on going forever because you run into this problem. It must be that the universe as we know it eventually decays. And that is a significant finding that came about because you imagined what seems to be an absurd thing, the, the, uh, 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 the spontaneous emergence of Boltzmann's brains in, a, in empty space. That's right. By thinking about something that admittedly is obviously wrong, well, if a theory predicts this obviously wrong <laughs> thing, then we can rule out that theory and move on, and that's the business we're in.